Welcome to Slight Reliability. Learning SRE one day at a time. I'm Stephen Townsend. Hello and welcome back to Slight Reliability, the show where we learn about SRE together. And today we're talking about SLOs or service level objectives in comparison to NFRs or non-functional requirements. And when I talk about NFRs today, I'm specifically talking about NFRs in the context of reliability. And going by Naran Desai's definition of reliability, which I quite like, that includes availability, performance, and correctness. Do things function as intended of our services. So uh, I know that NFRs can and often do include a much wider scope, security, usability, um, all the other illities. We're not talking about those, we are talking about reliability. I posted about this on LinkedIn uh, recently and I was somewhat surprised uh, by the anti-NFR sentiment from the community. Uh, comments such as, what is an NFR? Doesn't make any sense. Man, it kind of makes sense to me. I haven't had a good relationship with the concept of an NFR in my career to date. So here's my personal experience with non-functional requirements when I was working as a performance engineer. Now most of the time I would work on large programs or initiatives or projects. Right? They were often something that was done a few weeks before going live with a new product or release after everything was already built and designed. Which is interesting, there was no opportunity there to go back and change the design because it's too late anyway. The other thing I've noticed is that the numbers inside the requirements, specifically around response times, for example, didn't have any meaning or justification. So here are some specific examples of what I mean there. I once saw a requirement that all API calls for a big diverse platform should take two seconds or less 99.9% .9 of the time. This was a blanket requirement. It did not differentiate between different services, even though some services, or some APIs, were very simple single component things so it didn't take a lot of effort. Some API calls chained together a whole bunch of different services and activities and provided a lot of business value but took a longer time. So there was no differentiation there whatsoever. The other thing is that some of these services, these APIs, had very low volumes of load, especially starting out with. So to take the 99.9th percentile time was kind of difficult slash meaningless given the very small sample size and quite hard to test too because you're, you're trying to test something which is maybe going to experience dozens of calls an hour and to get confidence in the results of your testing, you're going to want to be testing it, you know, many tens or hundreds of thousands an hour, which how do you do that test in a way which isn't going to blow everything up necessarily. It's a somewhat challenging situation to deal with. Here's another example. What if there's a more realistic goal that is a particular operation and we know within the business context uh, it should take no longer than five seconds? I said within the business context, but often the question is, well, where did that number come from? What is the business or the customer impact if it took six seconds or seven seconds? I am yet in my career to see a requirement with the working or the evidence to justify why that target was set. And surely the information must be out there with experimentation or all of the massive amounts of data we have in our analytics platforms and our technical platforms. There probably is a way to have an actual meaningful conversation and set a target based on real insight. Another thing that I observed when working as a performance engineer is that these NFRs were generally mandated by the organization or by a large program or initiative and they were imposed on the teams who actually deliver and own the services. So that immediately strips away all ownership and autonomy 
they become checkboxes that need to be ticked. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. SLOs and NFRs are not something we can compare apples for apples. So let's acknowledge that. Um, I'm comparing apples and pears. <laughs> but just bear with me because I think at a basic level, they are an opportunity to describe the level of service that we want to provide to our customers in the realm of reliability. SLOs and NFRs differ, in my experience, in several ways. SLOs are owned by the teams that build and operate the service. This to me is incredibly important because it gives the teams who own the service the autonomy to set their own goals for the level of service they want to give their customers and a sense of ownership. If someone tells me personally to do something, but I don't understand why, I don't have an incentive to do what I'm told unless there's a carrot I'm being bribed or a stick I'm being threatened. However, if I say I'm going to do something, then I feel a personal commitment to deliver what I said. That's the ownership part of what I'm talking about here. And I think that applies to DevOps teams as well as to individuals. My wife just came into the room because she overheard me and said I'm talking about intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. So there's the official term, if you will. Another difference between SLOs and NFRs is that SLOs are objectives, they're goals, they're not mandatory targets. This completely changes the psychology of how they are handled and treated. I think mandatory targets encourage mediocrity. A mandatory target tends to be set around the minimum level of service that is acceptable. That's not going to lead to excellence. Whereas an SLO, it can be a goal, it can be aggressive, it can help us move towards excellence. Even if we can't quite meet that goal right now. SLOs are also dynamic and changing, whereas NFRs tend to be a static target that rarely or ever changes. SLOs can be agile. They can adjust to changing circumstances. And right now in the modern era, there are constantly changing circumstances. SLOs help you drive towards higher levels of service over time by adjusting your SLOs. And because SLOs are owned by the teams they can be changed without a lot of overhead. Whereas NFRs, from my experience, they tend to require formal approvals and red tape to change, which hinders agility. If you've been listening to my previous episodes, you'll know that I use the word outcome constantly, and I think once again it applies here. In my experience, NFRs are based around following a process, procedure. They come from fear, fear of messing up trying to control things so that the bad things don't happen. The SRE mindset is that bad things will inevitably occur. We cannot avoid that. That is reality. So it's about how do we adjust the way that we build and operate our services accordingly. SLOs, in theory, focus on customer experience. In other words, great customer outcomes rather than all that fear and procedure. And to me, that is a much healthier place to be. If we strip away the buzzwords, I would summarize my current perspective as this. When it comes to reliability, it is counterproductive to set mandatory targets. You want to set flexible goals owned by the teams who build and operate the services in question. Whether you call that SLOs or something else, it doesn't matter but the language and approach that you use will need to accommodate the unique context of each organization or team that you're working with. It's also worth mentioning that although in this episode I seem to be gushing over SLOs and saying how much better than they are, than they are than the traditional NFRs, which I think they mostly are, I don't think that just saying SLOs is the answer is the way to go. I think that every person who works in this space needs to think about the desired outcome and think about in their unique context how they can get there. Which in my case, we've talked about it as a team, we want happier customers, happier staff, and more reliable services. That's what it comes down to. So anything that we can do to get us to move towards that is a good thing. And maybe saying SLOs and jumping in with a bunch of buzzwords and showing examples of what Google do isn't necessarily 
the most helpful thing that you can do. That's also my current perspective. Well, that's all from another episode of Slight Reliability. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time as we learn a little bit more about SRE together.